In a moment, we will begin the listening comprehension section of the test. Read the directions for section 1 in your test book as you listen to the directions on this recording. Section 1. Listening Comprehension In this section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers in this test. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you hear... I don't like this painting very much. Neither do I. What does the man mean? In your test book, you read A. He does not like the painting either. B. He does not know how to paint. C. He does not have any paintings. D. He does not know what to do. You learn from the conversation that neither the man nor the woman likes the painting. The best answer to the question, what does the man mean, is A. He does not like the painting either. Therefore, the correct choice is A. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number 1. Have you seen my calculator? It was right here a minute ago. Did you look under your book? I'm always losing things that way. What does the woman imply? Number 2. I really want to take astronomy, but my course load this spring is too heavy already. The summer session might be a good idea, since you'll be working on campus anyway. What does the man suggest the woman do? Number 3. Professor Clark, I'd like to repeat the experiment from last class. Is there a possibility I could use the lab over the weekend? It'll be locked, but you can get the key from the security office. Make sure you return it when you're finished. What does the woman imply about the man? Number 4. I really like your sweatshirt. I don't think I've ever seen a design like that before. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? My parents were in Japan last year and brought it back for me. What does the man mean? Number 5. Are you free tonight? I'm eating a few friends at the restaurant on Main Street. Oh, I'd love to, but I already have dinner plans for tonight. Another time, perhaps. What does the woman mean? Number 6. I just registered for the research conference. The deadline is tomorrow. It doesn't take long, though. You simply go to the conference website. I guess I better do that today, huh? I have a little time before I teach my next class. What can be inferred about the man? Number 7. 
Number 7. That's a great bike. Where'd you get it? You know that sporting goods store on Harrison Street? They've been running tremendous sales all summer. What does the woman imply? Number 8. So, how much was your plane ticket? More than I could really afford. I had to dip into my savings. What does the woman imply? Number 9. Professor Jones, we had a power failure in my dorm last night, so I wasn't able to finish my paper. Could I hand it in tomorrow? I understand that things sometimes do come up, but I don't make any exceptions. I made that clear in the first class, and the library was open till midnight. What does the professor mean? Number 10. I'm thinking of moving off campus next semester, but since I don't have a car, I'd need to stay pretty close by. Any suggestions? It just so happens the people who live downstairs for me are moving next month, so their apartment might be available, and it's only a block away from the university. If you're interested, I'll look into it for you. What can be inferred about the man? Number 11. What an awful movie. A total waste of time. You can say that again. What does the woman mean? Number 12. I hear your sister got into a prestigious university. I bet she was checking her mail every day for her acceptance letter. Yes, she was a little nervous until she found out last week. What does the man imply about his sister? Number 13. I'm really sorry I'm late for the meeting. My car wouldn't start and I had to take the bus. That's okay. We're still waiting for Mark. What does the woman imply? Number 14. Wow, you seem to be in a really good mood today. What's the secret? Don't know. I guess some mornings you wake up feeling great, and some mornings you don't. What does the man mean? Number 15. I'd think twice about taking a history class next year. There's not a single good professor in the whole history department. Look. That's what you said last semester about the sociology department. And I'm very glad I didn't pay any attention to what you said. What does the woman mean? Number 16. I know we're supposed to meet at 5 in the library, but something came up unexpectedly. Would you mind changing it to six? Not at all. My schedule's very flexible. What does the man mean? Number 17. Can you believe it? A 20-page term paper and a final exam. What does Professor Johnson think, that we don't have any classes but his? Wait a second. I'm sure he said it was either one or the other. What does the man imply? Number 18. 
Number 18. I'm really happy I got that athletic scholarship, but I am embarrassed by the big fuss all my friends are making. Well, it is quite an accomplishment. Of course your friends are happy for you. What does the man mean? Number 19. My computer screen is flashing, and I can't get it to stop. Oh, a similar thing happened to me the other day. I'll bet together we can figure out what to do. What will the woman probably do next? Number 20. There's quite a crowd at the health center today. I'm surprised so many people are interested in getting a free blood pressure test. Come to think of it, I haven't had mine checked in a while. Guess I'll go get in line. What does the man mean? Number 21. I can't believe I actually graduated and I'm leaving tonight. I enjoyed studying with you this semester. Same here. And hey, don't forget to drop me a line once in a while. Let me know how the new job goes. What does the woman mean? Number 22. Look at the fancy pen I just found under this bench. It looks expensive. Oh, so that's where it went. What does the woman imply? Number 23. I don't know what I was thinking of when I gave you those directions. Oh, don't worry about it. I made it before the conference began. I didn't have to drive that much out of my way. What can be inferred from this conversation? Number 24. Now that you've had a chance to read our proposal to renovate the campus cafe, do you think the university will approve it? Actually, I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. What does the woman mean? Number 25. Wow, I've already taken one of those pills for my headache, but it's still bothering me. Well, why not take another? The recommended dose is one or two, depending on how bad it is. What does the woman suggest the man do? Number 26. What's Phil doing here? I thought he was taking the fall semester off. Didn't you hear that his parents talked him out of it? What does the man imply about Phil? Number 27. A florist told me that if I want to keep flowers looking fresh, I should cut a bit off the stems before putting them in water. I wonder if it really works. Someone told me the same thing, and the bouquet I had did last longer. Anyway, it can't hurt, can it? What does the woman imply? Number 28. That was a fascinating lecture, but the questions from the audience afterward were mostly irrelevant to the topic. Yes, I totally agree. I would have preferred less of that and more of the speaker. What does the man imply?
Number 29. I just found out my dentist retired last month. Do you have one you'd recommend? Yeah. In fact, I have a checkup there next week. Say, I've even got his card with me, if you want to wait a minute while I get it out. What does the man mean? Number 30. Tomorrow I have my big presentation in anthropology class. I'm really worried about speaking in front of the class. You always say that and then you always do really well. You have nothing to worry about. What does the woman imply? This is the end of Part A. Now read along as the directions for Part B are being read. Part B. Directions. In this part of the test you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, Read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation between two students. So, how was the singing competition last weekend? You don't want to know. What do you mean? Wasn't it near the beach? That should have been fun. It should have been fun, but we only came in second place. Not only that, but we weren't even really able to enjoy the beach either. Hold on. You're upset about finishing second? How many singing groups competed? About 30. I know second place sounds okay, but that's three years in a row we've been in second. And it's the same group that's beaten us three years in a row. Well, that's too bad. But what about the beach? I ended up spending a lot of time studying in the library. I would have loved to be at the beach swimming in the ocean or playing beach volleyball instead of being stuck in the library studying. Well, it wasn't exactly like that. I had to spend some time studying, too. We really didn't have much free time. We were scheduled almost the whole time, practicing, performing, or watching the competition. So you were that busy? Yeah. But, you know, the ocean water's still cold, so I don't think we really miss too much. Well, maybe you guys should plan to go back when the semester's over. Yep, that's exactly what we have in mind. It should be a lot more fun there when the weather warms up, and we don't have to think about competing. Number 31. What are the students mainly discussing? Number 32. What does the woman say about the winners of the competition? Number 33. How did the man spend his weekend? Number 34. What does the woman say about her weekend schedule? Questions 35 through 37. Listen to a conversation between a student and an art professor. Professor, I really like those sculptures by Brancusi. They have such simple, elegant lines. Yes, they do. Were there any other sculptors doing work like that? Well, yes. There was a sculptor named Isamu Noguchi. Noguchi actually worked in Brancusi's studio for a time, so Brancusi was one of several important influences on his work. Okay. Noguchi was born in 1904 in California. His mother was an American writer, and his father was a Japanese poet. 
And during his childhood, Noguchi lived in Japan. And when his mother hired a carpenter to build a house there, Noguchi helped out, and in the process came to love working with wood and other natural materials. Okay. Well, later, he returned to the United States and became an artist, then went to Paris, where he worked for Brancusi. So Brancusi taught him the art of sculpting? Yes, and a commitment to strict economy in his art. Economy? Yes, but not in the usual financial sense. In this case, the term economy refers to stripping away unnecessary details, emphasizing the artwork's basic form. Oh, okay. Also, after Noguchi had studied under Brancusi for a while, he took a trip back to Japan. And on that trip, he studied some traditional Japanese gardens, and he noticed how stone was used to create a very simple but elegant open space. So, these gardens halfway around the world actually shared some of the defining characteristics of Brancusi's sculptures. And probably reinforced and, like, further shaped the concept of economy in Noguchi's mind. Undoubtedly. Number 35. What is the conversation mainly about? Number 36. What kind of work did Noguchi's father do? Number 37. According to the professor, what did Noguchi learn to do when he was a child in Japan? This is the end of Part B. Now read along as the directions for Part C are being read. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test you will hear several short talks. After each talk you will hear some questions. The talks and the questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you hear, Listen to an instructor talk to his class about a television program. I'd like to tell you about an interesting TV program that'll be shown this coming Thursday. It'll be on from 9 to 10 p.m. on Channel 4. It's part of a series called Mysteries of Human Biology. The subject of the program is the human brain, how it functions and how it can malfunction. Topics that will be covered are dreams, memory, and depression. These topics are illustrated with outstanding computer animation that makes the explanations easy to follow. Make an effort to see this show. Since we've been studying the nervous system in class, I know you'll find it very helpful. Now... Listen to a sample question. What is the main purpose of the program? In your test book, you read A. To demonstrate the latest use of computer graphics. B. To discuss the possibility of an economic depression. C. To explain the workings of the brain. D. To dramatize a famous mystery story. The best answer to the question, what is the main purpose of the program, is C, to explain the workings of the brain. Therefore, the correct choice is C. Now listen to another sample question. Why does the speaker recommend watching the program? In your test book, you read, A, it is required of all science majors. B, it will never be shown again. C. It can help viewers improve their memory skills. D. It will help with coursework. The best answer to the question, why does the speaker recommend watching the program, is D. It will help with coursework. Therefore, the correct choice is D. 
Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 38 through 41. Listen to part of a lecture in a marketing class. Senses play an important role in consumer decision making. Shoppers like to sniff a piece of fish or listen to a stereo before buying it. But the power of touch was not fully understood by researchers until recently. Evidence is showing that consumers who are able to handle merchandise are more likely to buy it and pay more for it. Shoppers touch for various reasons. There's fact-finding touch, like turning a food container to read the list of ingredients, or picking an item up to assess its specific attributes, such as weight, texture, or temperature. There's also touch for its own sake, because it feels nice to, say, run your fingers along a shiny table. Psychologically, touching an item fosters a sense of ownership, which makes it more difficult to resist buying it. So it makes sense when retailers display sweaters on shelves rather than in protective plastic bags. One unexpected finding of this research is that, in terms of generating sales, Imagine Touch is just as effective as Actual Touch. That's good to know if you're writing descriptions of items sold online. The need to touch varies. Shoppers whose need to touch is high, they tend to buy more when touching is encouraged. In one experiment, researchers placed a Feel the Freshness sign on a fruit display. All shoppers were more likely to touch the fruit when the sign was there than when it wasn't. But shoppers who ranked higher in the need to touch were more likely to buy the fruit they touched. Number 38. What is the main purpose of the lecture? Number 39. According to the professor, what psychological feeling do shoppers tend to have when they touch an item of merchandise? Number 40. What does the professor imply about marketers who sell items online? Number 41. What does the professor emphasize as an important characteristic of shoppers? Questions 42 through 46. Listen to part of a talk in a history class. Let me warn you against a mistake that historians often make. They sometimes assume that people in the past used the same concepts we do. There's a wonderful example that made news in the history of mathematics a while ago. It concerns an ancient Mesopotamian tablet that had some calculations on it. Sophisticated calculations that looked like measurements of triangles. So that's what many historians assumed they were. And if the Mesopotamians knew how to use these calculations, and historians started thinking that they did, that meant their math was incredibly advanced. Well, it turns out that the idea that Mesopotamians used sophisticated methods to calculate the measurements of triangles is probably wrong. Why do we think that? Because we discovered that Mesopotamians didn't know how to measure angles, which is a crucial element in the whole process of triangle calculations. Apparently, the Mesopotamians had a number of other uses for the calculations on the tablet. These other uses were important, but they were not related to triangles. And so these tablets, in all likelihood, were practice sheets, if you like, for doing math exercises. In all likelihood, it was the ancient Greeks who first calculated the measurements of triangles. And this was hundreds of years after the Mesopotamians. Number 42. What is the main purpose of the talk?
Number 43. What was on the Mesopotamian tablet mentioned in the talk? Number 44. According to the professor, what had been assumed about the Mesopotamians? Number 45. According to the professor, how was the tablet most likely used by the Mesopotamians? Number 46. What does the professor imply about the ancient Greeks? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to part of a talk in a biology class. A really surprising discovery was made up in Canada recently. Some fossilized animal footprints they found in some sandstone there. So why is that exciting? Well, this sandstone is really old, and so the footprints are too. Older, by about 40 million years, they think, than any footprints ever found of animals that walked on land. Since we believe that land animals originally emerged from the sea, well, this shows the move from sea to land happened way earlier than we thought, 40 million years earlier, and that's a lot. And finding these fossils was sheer luck. There were these Canadian stonecutters cutting up sandstone to use as a building material, and apparently this stone with the fossil prints wasn't smooth enough to use, so the workers rejected it for building use. And the discarded stone lay there for years before anyone who could recognize its true importance was lucky enough to lay eyes on it. Now, how do we know these impressions were made by animals on land, not still back in the sea walking on the sea floor? Well, the footprints look too deep to be made underwater, because underwater you're buoyant and your footsteps are lighter. So any tracks wouldn't be as deep. But how could sea animals end up doing better by moving onto land? Well, the sea was full of dangerous predators that would attack their young. So one theory is that land offered them a safer place to reproduce, a greater chance to have their young survive. Number 47. What is the talk mainly about? Number 48. According to the professor, what question does the discovery in Canada help answer? Number 49. Why does the professor mention stone cutters? Number 50. What evidence is given to show whether the footprints were made by animals on land or underwater? This is the end of Section 1, Listening Comprehension. Stop work on Section 1. End of recording.